This video is going to be a two-parter. Um, the first part, I'm going to talk a little bit about my New Year's resolutions, nothing crazy. Um, and then the second part is going to be my 10 favorite things that I thrifted this year. Um, so if you would like to just skip over the whole New Year's resolution thing, um, you can go straight to this time and you can skip over all the kind of like chit chat stuff and go straight into, um, the vintage goodness. Yeah. Um, okay. But really quick, if you are interested in a little bit of new year talk, I know that, uh, Instagram has been inundated with constant, it's crazy. Like the new year shenanigans, whew, taking over my Instagram. So if you're over it, I understand. Um, but generally I don't do new year's resolutions, like literally never. I think two years ago I did a new year's resolution and it was all goals of like my social media. So like I was at like 600 followers on Instagram and my goal was to be at a thousand. And I ended up with like 650, like something crazy. Like I was hoping to get like those 300 followers in a year and I got like 50 followers. And so I was kind of let down by that. Um, and then I realized this year that it's really silly to make a New Year's resolution based on something that you can't directly control. Like, yeah, you can indirectly control based on your content and the regularity of how much you post and what you post. And I get all that. I really do. But also, you can't really force people to subscribe to you. So I don't know. I felt like that wasn't really like a good goal because that wasn't um, something that I could very easily control. So I figured that I wanted all of my um, New Year's resolutions or my goals to be things that I actually can control. Yeah. So the first one is I want to pay off my credit card debt. Um, so I have um, two credit cards, but only one with like money on it. And um, that has a little under 2000 on it. Yeah, kind of a lot. Um, basically what happens is I buy stuff and then I pay it off and then I buy more stuff. Yeah, or that's what happened. Yeah, so my goal is to just get that paid off. I think a lot of the time I just like don't really think about it. Um, a lot of the time I'll get it paid down to like 800 and then I'm like, oh, I'm good. And then I like buy something and then I'm like, Ugh. but Christmas just happened. So that is never, that is no bueno ever for the credit card situation. Um, so I'm really hoping that I can get it paid off this year. I feel like that's not that hard. We'll see. Um, okay. So my second goal is to get everything that I have purchased, um, for resale or like just everything that I would like to resell listed. Um, so that sounds like a really ridiculously easy, <laughs> like, oh, what most resellers do just naturally without it being a goal. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, I don't know. I thrift a lot, obviously. And sometimes I just like get really overwhelmed and I'm like, ah, and I just throw it all in storage. Um, especially when we were living in our condo because it was like stuff was everywhere and we were bursting at the seams so that was really bad and then sometimes when I get like more overwhelmed than anxious I'm like a hoarder and then I just like go and I thrift more because I'm like oh but thrifting makes me feel so happy but then um, having a bunch of junk everywhere does not make me feel happy so yeah TLC your girls over here no I'm just kidding but anyway um, when we moved, we did have like a bunch of tubs of stuff that I wanted to list. And I'm finally like really in a good groove of like going through it and listing. Um, it's really sad because my Etsy has been open since like 2016, but I've only started like being pretty consistent about listing like in the past six months. So that's my goal is to get all that stuff listed. It doesn't matter if it sells or not. I just want to get it listed. Um, I have a bunch of clothes, old clothes that I want to list too. And then just even walking around the house, it's like you thrift something and you feel such a strong emotional connection to it when you thrift it. But then after a while, you kind of like, it's not that you don't like it anymore. It's just that you don't feel that strong, like, oh, I'm obsessed with it feeling. And then that's when it needs to go when it's time to 
to sell it to someone who does feel like a strong emotional connection to it and then go out and thrift something new so that's kind of where i'm at i love like change in our home like always just refreshing um so in order to do that i need to actually get off my booty and start listing stuff so that's my second goal and i think i can i think i can do it bear's been helping me a lot um so yeah thank you bear okay last thing this is another goal that's kind of ridiculous so again these new year's resolutions that's not lose 100 pounds no no these are things that i feel like should have already happened but i'm finally like taking a stance against my laziness and actually doing it um so the last thing is um we've been in our house for a year like a little over a year like a year and two months um and when we first moved in we gutted the upstairs bathroom um, so it is a full bath, but it's very tiny, like super, super small. Um, but we took everything out, like the walls, the subfloor, um, Jordan's like sanded the popcorn ceilings off the ceiling, like everything. It, we even need a new window, like literally everything. Um, but that being said, because we need so many things, oh, and we moved where all the hardware is going to go. So we moved where the sink is going to go and where the shower is going to go. <sighs> so it's been a lot. Um, but anyway still even with all those things that needed to happen that bathroom should be done by now but it's not even close to done um so definitely want to get that done as soon as possible i'm my goal is not goal but my idea is that in about six months i want to check back in and do like a resolution check-in and kind of see how i'm doing so i like hold myself accountable for actually getting things done but it's sad because I can't have people really come and stay. I mean, I can, but like until the upstairs is totally done and ready for them. So ah, um, that's my second goal or my third goal. My last goal, which kind of coincides with that because it's sort of like 3.5, is just to love our home the way it's at now. Um, my husband and I both like get really gung-ho and fixated on projects and i know i get super overwhelmed with um all the projects that i want to do like right now if i could take a sledgehammer to our master bathroom like i totally would i would just get rid of everything but the thing is i don't have the money to or even like the idea i don't even know exactly what i want to do in there so i don't have the money to go in there and fix everything so if i don't have the money to go in there and fix everything then i can't just demo and gut everything so my my point is to just kind of love our home the way it's at so instead of just getting rid of everything maybe painting maybe getting a new shower curtain maybe um getting a new mirror and taking the mirror down getting a new light fixture like little cosmetic things that can make a big change like even right now you can see this plug right here is like a weird beige like literally why why but it is and like all our plugs are that way so take getting rid of all of those and making them white painting the walls white like little things like that i think are going to make me really really happy um El cabbage is like teething super bad i almost called her eloise oh my gosh um so she's been munching on the baseboards so i'm not ready to change out baseboards yet but that's another thing we could do so little stuff um that'll kind of make the home feel very fresh that's that's our goal Okay, so you made it through my um, New Year's resolutions, my fake New Year's resolutions, um, to the vintage part. Okay, so I made a list of 10 things because like if I just said, oh, my favorite thing, at first I was like going to do, oh, my favorite things that I thrifted, which is pretty much everything. So I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to come up with um, <laughs> just 10. So again like i said before we just moved into this house not just but we've been in here a year and before we moved in we lived in a condo so we didn't really have that much furniture like literally hardly any so this year has been like the year of buying tons of furniture so most of my things that are on this list are furniture and you know i want to be honest because truly like my favorite things are most of our furniture so i mean that's legit I'm gonna show it so um i tried to only pick there's only one thing on this list that's from like an actual like bona fide like vintage um seller everything else is things that i found at um thrift stores um yard sales flea markets stuff, stuff like that 
the first five things, just like I was saying, we just moved into a new house, are all furniture items or things that are kind of like too big for me to show you. Even the stuff around me right now, it's kind of big. Um, but like lamps, furniture, um, rugs, stuff like that. So I'll insert separate clips so you can kind of see all those guys in their natural habitat. Um, but the other five things that I wanted to show you, I kind of have accumulated all around me. All right, so the first thing is, um, it's kind of like three pictures in one, um, cause they're all the same thing. So I collect taxidermy butterflies, but I don't have a lot of taxidermy butterfly pictures. Um, I have a few of like just two, but I don't have a lot of like a lot of butterflies. So, um, sorry guys, I'm a little stuffy. Um, the ones I'm going to show you, I'm super excited about. I would love to do a whole gallery wall of taxidermy butterflies. I'm not sure if I'll ever find enough to actually do that, but it would be amazing if I did. Um, so the first one is kind of hard to see because it's see-through glass, um, but these fantastic butterflies, um, it has a little hook. So those are absolutely magical. I am obsessed with them um, and I love the wood frame. And then um, to kind of go along with that are these. So it's just a bigger version of it. Um, it's a little bit dusty. Sorry about that. It's on the floor in my closet waiting to be hung. But yeah, they're just absolutely phenomenal, completely spectacular. Um, one of my favorite things that I think I've ever gotten. So really, really excited about both of those. Put that here so it doesn't get messed up. All right, and then the last one is also butterflies. Um, so these two I found, the first two that I showed you, I found together at the same estate sale. And then this one I found um, at like an outdoor market. Um, so this one's gonna be a little harder to show you, but it's just this beautiful cabinet of all of these butterflies. So really, really, really magical. Um, one of my favorite things I think I've ever found. Um, I just can't get over it. So I would love to collect like a whole bunch of these big boxes and just do like a whole wall of them. I don't know if I'll ever get to that point, but oh, that would be amazing. Okay. So I kind of grouped all the butterflies together as one thing, um, so that I could cheat and show you a few more things. All right, so then the next thing that I was going to show you is this, um, this is an antique seeds box. It's a little bit difficult to show you because it's quite large, as you can see. It's very large. Um, okay, so kind of see the graphic and the writing on the front it is authentic and then the best is the graphic on the inside so it's all these old vegetables I wish I could zoom in for you guys but I literally this thing is enormous you can see me like peering over the top hello but yeah um so this was a really cool piece. I found this at an estate sale. And one thing I want to say is like all these pieces were varying prices. So like some things I got for like an amazing deal and some things I didn't. Um, so, you know, I think sometimes we have this idea of being thrifters that everything has to be dirt cheap and that just isn't always the case. So sometimes you're going to find stuff that just really speaks to your heart and you, you just kind of have to have it. And sometimes you're going to get lucky and you're going to find that great deal. All right. So the next thing, man, like literally everything I have to show is huge. <sighs> okay. So the next thing is this ridiculous bear. Ugh. Okay. So backstory. I live in Florida. This guy is out of a lodge in Georgia. So it's this big giant bear head, you can kind of tell based next to me, not a small person, he is huge. 
Um, he kind of looks like taxidermy, but of course he's not. Um, he is like a composite of some sort. Um, he's hollow, but he's still very heavy. Um, not as heavy as he looks though. And yeah, I'm not really sure what he's made out of. Like he's not wood. He, he's, he might be like some sort of plastic. I'm not really sure. But anyway, I'm pretty much obsessed with him. Um, not, I, again, like all these things I can show you because I've thrifted or found them and I don't know what to do with them yet. Like it, when I lived in the condo, because it wasn't our home, I was just like throwing stuff up left and right. And now that it's our house and I feel like things are a lot more permanent, I'm struggling with knowing exactly the right place and um, being afraid to commit to hanging things up. So it's been a struggle. Okay, so um, the last two things I just wanted, I wanted to kind of do like all different genres of things. I didn't want to just do um, only furniture, um, only pictures, I don't know. So um, the next thing I wanted to show you is a piece of jewelry. Um, this is kind of my cheater piece because this piece I did find at like a vintage market. I found this in Mount Dora um, at Renninger's. Um, but it's this really awesome necklace. Um, it's Hopi and it's all these amazing carved animals. And I actually um, have a smaller fetish necklace than this. Um, and I, I like that and I wear that too, but I just love like how big and substantial this is. So it's just really chunky and it just looks really cool on. Like it makes a really big statement. And my smaller ones are beautiful too um, and really special, but they don't make as big of a statement. So I'm kind of all into like, lately I've been really into like big chunky jewelry. So, um, or at least necklaces and then like more dainty bracelets. Um, so yeah, love that. And then the last thing is a picture that I thrifted actually. Um, I found this at Goodwill um, and it's a this watercolor. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen when I found this. Um, it's this beautiful signed um, watercolor, and I love the frame, too. Um, and it says, on the back, it says, Watercolor done by Bill Graham, presented to Gary Gariano, 1970. So, not really sure about all of that, but I love the date, obviously. I love that it's signed. I love that it's watercolor. And of course I love the frame and the subject matter is just phenomenal. So again, another piece that I'm like, I don't know what to do with it. I love it too much, but yeah. So maybe I'll work on a gallery wall. <laughs> hey guys. All right, so I'm gonna bring you kind of around the house to show you some of my favorite things that I thrifted this year that I couldn't just show you. Um, sitting in front of the camera because they're mostly furniture and larger items. So here we go. Okay, so the first item is in this little room. This is like our breakfast nook, but now it's Cabbage's room because she lives in here, um, is this Broyhill piece. Um, I got this at an estate sale. Um, I got this and also a matching dresser. So it wasn't one of those things where I got it. I got it for $30. Like we did pay, um, we paid $3.75 for this um, and the other one, so it wasn't like it was super duper cheap, but I have seen them go like for over a thousand, so I was pretty excited for those prices. Um, sorry about the bunny gate, but we just have her gate up so that she doesn't nibble on it, because she does have a tendency to nibble on stuff. So there's Cabaggio. Hi, Cabbage. All right, so the next thing um, is our dining room set. So we got our dining room table and our um, china hutch at different times, but I kind of included both of them as one thing um, in my favorites list because they really sort of work really nicely together. Um, this table is mid-century, it's Danish. Um, when we got it, it had water stains, really bad water stains and like big gouges in it. Um, so my husband actually refinished it. So that was an offer up find. And 
I want to say we paid like 400 for it um, or 500. I, I can't remember. Um, the chairs are really cool though. We didn't need to refinish those. So they kind of just look like that. So I love our table. Um, I'm really, really happy with it. And then the other thing that I wanted to kind of include along with that is the China Hutch. Um, the China Hutch was an awesome deal. We got this at an estate sale. I think we only paid $100 for it. Maybe it was like 120, something like that. Um, it was actually funny because we saw it at an estate sale about two hours away from our house and we just had my Jeep. We didn't have my husband's truck. So we were like, oh my gosh, are we gonna drive home and then come all the way back? And it was the last day of the estate sale. So, and then we were like, how are we gonna get this big giant mammoth? Um, up on the truck so that was a big ordeal and then it kind of worked out so we were like eh, we left it and um the estate sale ended that was the last day of it and but we got the guy's number and the next morning it was a sunday morning um and we ended up calling the estate sale owner and he was gonna be at the house anyway because other people were picking up furniture they had purchased the previous day so we were like can we come and get that um china hutch did anybody get it so he said yes so we were able to bring my husband's truck and lug this thing two hours home um it was definitely a huge labor of love because as you can tell it's a really huge piece um and i am so excited that we got it home safely but that's pretty awesome. All right, so that's the first two. Um, the next thing is our rugs. So this year has really been like, 2019 was like the year of rugs because we moved into a new house and we did not have like any of the rugs that we needed. So we got that rug. This runner is my most favorite piece that we have um, as far as rugs. I absolutely love it. Um, we also have this runner which is really cool um, that I just have on the stairs. And then um, this big guy. So this one was a really great piece. Um, it's huge, as you can see. So it's pretty exciting to kind of like have this big giant rug. Um, okay. And then the next thing is this awesome little chair that I found. Again, this is an offer up found, find. Um, oh, and all the rugs were estate sale finds. I don't think I said that. Um, so this guy is Peruvian. He is leather and wood, and he almost has like a mid-century modern style to him a little bit, um, just kind of the way it is, the way it's made, and the lines of it. But it's a little hard to see with the lighting, but I just absolutely love all of the leather work and all the details. It's just so cool. Um... trying to take you around to the back. So you can kind of see that they have like, it's held together with little pegs that wrap around. Um, and it's just a really, really beautiful, awesome piece. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I know this is kind of a long video, so I really appreciate you guys um, watching and I hope that everyone has a fantastic new year. Um, and love yourself.